Okay, so I'm going to start in a second here. Long day, mostly cleaning. I cleaned the whole store. I put up another workbench. Um, it's looking nice here. But at the end of the day, I still have now. I just finished doing all that. I now have my tickets I need to take care of that need to go out tomorrow. So I have a list. The way I have it set up now is... Is this on private? No. So I kind of have this set up now in a way that it's really structured that shipping is go everything goes out Monday, Wednesday and Friday. It's structured to where it's the way the repairs come in. They come in, they're completed. Like let's say if a repair comes in on Tuesday, it'll there will often be a little bit of backlogs so it'll get done on I mean let's say if a repair comes in on Monday, there will usually be a little bit of backlog so it'll get done on a Tuesday, ship on a Wednesday. You know, it, it really works that way. So that's what I'm working on. It looks like there's only one person watching because YouTube notifications are not working as usual, which is a very typical thing to happen. Because uh, Google notifications often suck. And I have allergies from all the dust. Since notifications aren't working, I will post this elsewhere too. Why not? If I get banned for posting in cell phone repair shop talk, then oh well. Okay, so we have two boards to look at tonight. Before actually, we have probably more, but I'm not going to get to those. So first one on the list is an A1466 with no backlight. Easy stuff. And you can see here. There's liquid right there. So let's see how bad this is. Let's open it up. And yeah, it has some substance that inside. Who knows what, but there's a substance inside. And IO board looks okay. Liquid around the board. Let's see what this does. Let's plug it in. I hate these keyboard. All these keyboard covers do is just like collect dirt and bacteria and garbage. Let's plug this in. This is an A2000165. Okay, so the screen is unplugged, so that's not going to help us. It does turn on. I did see the fan spins. So we, do, we do get power, so that is good. Let's go ahead and uh, take the board out and have a look. The screen connector looks okay. There's a little bit, but that's not our issue. Usually, um, you'll see when I get the board out. So let's do that now. A very common issue on these is going to be the screen connector being corroded. The screen connector will be corroded. The backlight pins are going to be burned away, and that's why it's not going to work. So we'll pull this board out. It actually doesn't look that bad. There's a little bit of corrosion on stuff, but after ultrasonic, this will be good as new. It's our antenna. Should probably wear gloves, given the fact it looks like this. But, uh, who cares? That's why w humans have immune systems. And the plumber is here. It's going good. Busy, but good. It's actually been quite slow this week, repair-wise. I always get panicked when it's slow. It always picks back up, but it's always that panic, you know, that it's slow. It's like, what's going on? Happens to me every time I get nervous and panic, but in reality, there's always nothing to worry about. Okay, whatever's in this DCN connector is like gluing it shut. There we go. That is glued shut. 
probably ultrasonic that I O board too, if it's like that. Battery got a little bit of liquid too. Not too bad. Ah, uh, of course. Okay, let's have a look at this board under the microscope. So, switch over to our Amscope view, kick on our microscope light, set the unit aside in the slot, because we don't need this right now. So, let's just look at the board. So you see this whole edge right here? That doesn't look too happy. That has liquid on it. BIOS chip has liquid on it, but it just got on the top, not on the pins, so we're fine clock chip a little bit. I mean the crystal oscillator, but it turns on, so I don't care about that. We have no backlight. So I want to see what's going to cause no backlight. Near the SMC a little bit. Again, this is all for power. We get power, so I'm going to note this. I'm going to address this, but I'm going to note this and move on. Here's our Thunderbolt, and here is, hmm, yeah, the worst of the corrosion is around this thing right here, but I wonder what this thing does wonder what this thing happens to do. Hmm. Let's let's look at our schematic and board view here. So this is an A2000165 used from 2015 to 2017 in the MacBook Air A1466. So let's open up a board view for this right here. Where is it here? I know. I work on this board several times a week. It's got to be here somewhere. 00165. Here we go. Display capture. Okay, so here's our board layout. We can see it's going to be this chip right here, U7701, BKL, FSET, PPV out, LCD, backlight. So what, what do you guys think this thing does? You know, to people that haven't, that are new, what do you think this chip does? See all this? Let's, have a look, let's pull up the schematic and have a look and see what this does on the, the uh, actual block diagram. You can see right here. That says LCD backlight. I wonder if that has anything to do with why your screen isn't working right. Where is it here? Ah, they don't have it written here. This is the backlight driver. This is going to be the DC to DC boost connector, uh, boost converter for um, LCD backlight. This is going to take PPBus G3 out, which is either going to be 8.5 or 12.5 volts, depending on the board, and this is going to change it into 50 volts for the screen. However, it should not actually be 50 volts. If you have 50 volts, there's no load on it. So there's going to be several different states that this is um, going to be in. So if it is 8 volts, it means it is not boosting. So we either have an issue with the chip or with uh, feedback to the chip, since the chip needs to know what it's doing in order to produce backlight voltage. Another state we're going to get is 18 volts, which means this is partially boosting. This is usually um, a bad chip. If it is working, we'll get 25 to 27 volts. That is normal. If our fuse is blown right here, this is our backlight fuse. A lot of shops will go ahead and replace this if they have no backlight without checking anything else. If, we have, if this fuse is blown, it is going to effectively cut off voltage of the circuit, so we will get zero volts coming out of it. So if you have 8 volts or 18 volts or 50 volts, do not even try to replace the backlight fuse because you're just going to waste your time because the fuse is going to be fine. If the fuse is blown, we'll have, e we'll have zero volts. If we have a short somewhere in the circuit, so U7701, any of these uh, capacitors, they're on another page, anything with a path to ground after this fuse, if we have a short here, we're also going to get zero volts. Now this fuse may or not may not blow. The connector will usually burn before the fuse will blow, so that's the chance you take. But this is our backlight driver, and as you can see, it looks really healthy on this board, doesn't it? Doesn't that look like a completely functioning backlight circuit? So, let's go ahead and get rid of this. Peel and replace. Get a new one on there. Let's kick on my, f my fume extractor because I have a feeling this one is probably not going to have a very pleasant smell to it. That Thunderbolt Mux cannot stay either. But this is the main area of concern right there looks all nasty like that. Ok, 
get a nozzle on the quick because I had a no nozzle was removed earlier. Greg M is here. To the person in Palmdale, I still don't know how to say that name in your chat. I, I would screw that up and I'm, yeah, being tired. I will not pronounce that right. So, person in Palmdale, hello. And as I suspected, the smell is not very pleasant. Now, now what I'm going to do is clean it with a Q-tip and alcohol just to see the condition of everything because we can't really tell when there's junk around it like that. So we're going to clean this up like this. You could definitely see that better now. So this is a very common mistake to miss this. So I'm going to show you guys in a second. After let's actually let's clean all this up. We have a broken. I don't know if that's a test point or a via right there, but it is broken right there. So let me just clean this up to get all the gunk away, and then some flux down. Get rid of all the lead-free stuff and all the remaining oxidation on those pads. I'm just moving the iron around and trying to recondition those pads, retin them, and you will eventually it'll get it'll get there. It'll remove all the oxidation on them. So it always kind of helps to add some fresh flux sometimes. I'm not putting that much pressure, just enough to kind of scrape and clean all that gunk off the pad. Sometimes it's okay to leave. Let's see, like that, it's good. Let's wick away everything, and then I I will show you one of the most common things people miss on this circuit. Actually, maybe not, because this one may be actually fine. Didn't look fine, but after cleaning, it looks perfect. We won't know yet. Yeah, this is actually perfect. So the feedback trace or the feedback pin, what you'll often get is going to be this try. Okay, so you'll often get this feedback pin right here. So you see how there's a, a via right here. So this right here is actually a via. The pad right here is that will often break. And when this pad breaks, it loses a connection from the circuit. 
if you do not have a variable zoom microscope if you're using an SE 400 you will miss this a lot so a lot of times you can get away with actually and I have an eyelash that is going in the scope and throwing off my vision so sometimes you can make you can scrape away this little via and then make a little wire across that that is easier that is easier than having to run a wire all the way from right here to the probe point right here so we're going to check and see if this feedback trace is indeed intact so we're going to do this by putting our meter in continuity or diode mode or resistance mode whatever works i personally like continuity mode for this put one uh, one lead on pin five and the other pin right over here and our meter beeps we have 1.8 ohms it is fine we have this other probe point right here which goes to the other side of the board is also fine so the circuit is fine this right here that is not fine so let's see if that's an actual probe point or if that's a resistor or I mean if that's a uh, trace and that is just going to be a probe point so we do not have to worry about that it could do whatever it wants um, actually you know what let's check let's see so this is going to go to pin 9 of the LP8550 so let's check that and that is indeed good so what I just did is I checked continuity from this pad right here over to pin 9 and it is good so this is actually not that bad so what we're gonna do put some flux down right here let's grab a new chip I'm going to use an LP8552 because I want to test these more since I've had mixed results with these on certain boards but I'm trying to get a I don't know if the boards have other issues I've only tested them on a few uh, like older ones and then I had one 3209 board that didn't work I had a 3435 that worked fine so I want to test this again on here should be just fine because I want to know if we have a compatible replacement for the 8550 if they are indeed discontinued so we'll throw one of these new guys on here I'm pretty sure again this is just an updated version of the 8550 by Texas Instruments it's the specs are the same but I have a feeling they tweak the internal design to be more durable or something kinda like they do with the TriStar on iPhones Bob Brown is here Just went into place right now. Gonna nudge it. That is soldered. Now we'll go ahead and start replacing everything around it. Let's go ahead and remove this too. We don't even need this to test. I just wanted this. So this chip right here is for Thunderbolt. Who uses Thunderbolt on a MacBook Air? Probably no one. We'll we will replace it, but for the meantime, it's gonna stay off for testing
Love this stuff. I'm making a pos I'm making a transition from vacuum tubes to vacuum tubes point to point soldering to SMT. Amazing stuff. I'm glad uh, you're doing this. I remember when I did that too. I remember it. I'm actually have memories more recently. I've been thinking back about when I was starting just soldering SMT stuff, and yeah, th those are fun times. I'm honestly surprised I came this far doing this. But I enjoy this work. I really do. I don't enjoy a lot of the other stuff that comes along with this. I don't enjoy a lot of the stuff that comes along sometimes with having a business, is like state-wise and stuff, but I truly do enjoy working on this stuff. There's nothing quite like, you know, having an issue that nobody else can solve. You sit down, you solve it, you, you spend time on it, and that just that feeling of reward after you finally figure out the issue is just, it's amazing. Let's grab a donor board. Uh, we can go ahead and, while we're here, just clean this area up too. Get rid of all that corrosion and oxidation. Go over it with the wick. Bailey is here. So if we look, there's this one little pad that doesn't quite want to... See, there's some oxidation left on it. We went over with the iron and this, so if whenever you get a pad like this, what you're going to do is grab your tweezers. So we're just cleaning the flux and alcohol off or the flux off right now with some alcohol so whenever you get a pad like this don't assume the pad is torn so look at it really good if you get something like this and see this gray stuff on it see that gray kind of coating on that what you're going to do is just get one point of your tweezers and just scrape it off manually like that see right here same thing just scrape it off and you're good to go right here now see that looks good like right here a lot of times you'll get that and you'll think the pad is gone, but it actually is not gone. So what you can do is just, instead of running a wire, tweezers. And that pad is like new again. All these pads are going to turn out really nicely. In a second here, once we put some flux and solder on them like this. That may have been completely off frame, whatever I did. It probably was off frame. Oh well. I want to switch my tip. I don't want this giant one on there. To people in chat, was everything I just did off frame when it was zoomed in? Or was it in frame? Hopefully in frame. I did half my stream off frame. Yeah, I do that too. It's annoying. Yeah, nothing even goes on these pads right here. I just want to clean them up still. I can't stand leaving corrosion anywhere on a board. Whenever you see like 
a pin looking like this, it's kind of hard to see. But whenever you see something like that where it just doesn't want to flow nicely, most likely it's because your iron tip is a little bit too small. You can get around this by raising up your iron temperature a little bit. So we'll go up to 740, which is more suitable for areas on the board that have a high thermal mass. And see that? It cleaned it up nicely. Same goes right here. Now that we upped our iron temperature, we're good. And right here on that one pin that was all corroded, we're just going to use our iron and scrape it a little bit since it's not all the way gone. And now it is. It looks good. Just like that. Whenever you get too much solder on something, this ISO is really bad or the exposure is really bad. It's so dark. Alright, let's grab a donor board, start replacing stuff. Um or I could just, you know what, let's before let's prep this entire board before going to a don donor board. So this area is all trash. Couple caps that can cause issues there. Let's get rid of this stuff. the heck is this? It's like jelly now. Get out of here. Surprise this board turned on. This board seemed like beyond that point. That's just for Bluetooth. I'm not sure what this does. So there's a via right there. Hopefully that doesn't go to anything too important. Due to the trace size, I kind of think that's a main power rail right there. So let's see what that, what does this chip even do over here? So this is for Wi-Fi. So this is pretty important and that is PP5. Who the heck is outside my door? Get out of here. I'm not sure who that was. I should go check. No, I better stay in here. Is my door locked? Yes. Okay. So, this is for Wi Fi, this is PP5 VS5, that's going to power the Wi Fi chip, everything else looks fine. Right here, we could clean this up.
And so this area is pretty chewed up. So what does this one via do over here? It looks like <coughs> that is for airport, clock reg, something or other. And that is a via. That is not going to have connection to the other side. So we're going to have to run a wire from pin 7 to this to it looks like the fourth pin of the airport card. Not a big deal. We'll get it done. So so much for an easy no backlight. This is like a multiple system, multiple component issue. So whenever you see a cap like this, okay, like this, with the dark ends on it, get rid of that. That does not belong. Majority of the resistors are going to be fine, but any caps that look like that, get rid of them. The resistors can't really fail down the line. If they're reopened now, then they're not going to be an issue, but caps can, so. I seriously wonder who is outside my door. That's creepy. You know, people call sometimes at 11 o'clock at night asking if I'm open or if I repair stuff. It's like, no, go. That, whatever I just took off, should have stayed. It wasn't a trick-or-treater. There's no reason for a trick-or-treater to be in here. That was like a troll of some kind. And plus it's like 10. Well, I guess it's not that late. It is pretty cold here, isn't it? See, it's supposed to be cold tonight, I think. It's going to be in the 20s here tonight. And um, I still don't have heat in my office. I tried calling the gas company today, and I was on hold for like 30 minutes, and I just hung up. So we'll see how that goes. I just never, I never had the need for heat. If it's just me here, I don't care. But it, now that there's somebody else working here, it's like I have to have heat, you know. Like, I don't mind being cold. But if I want to keep someone as an employee, I can't expect them to sit in the office when it's 26 degrees in here, you know. Three Celsius. What's that in Fahrenheit? It's 37 out right now? No way. No, that's got to be a lie. 
93550 weather it's 43 out so 6 degrees Celsius I dislike the cold too, Rob. But I dislike the extreme heat too, so. Guessing this is going to be one of the USB C data lines, or the USB data lines that's broken off right here to the CPU. We will see. Why did I pick this board? Thought it would be an easy one, but I don't think it's going to be an easy one. We have to get it done either way, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, what does that pin go to? USB BT connector. USB BT con whatever. And that goes internal to the board. So in this case, yeah, so we got to run a wire over to since the as crazy as this sounds this actually goes to the airport card well no I guess that does make sense so yeah this is gonna go to the chip to the airport card to the CPU so I don't know why I was thinking Bluetooth was separate from the airport card but it is not this very much goes to the air airport card so we will run a wire from this over to here to the airport card and then this goes to a via to the processor well it should it should go No, okay, so that's the connector, and these go to the processor. So these are the ones you don't want to have issues with, because these go right to the processor, and we don't want that. So, that yeah, no wires under the processor tonight. So this is pretty easy. Let's just go ahead and fill this in. I guess I'll start in the SMC area. Let me prep this area, too, I guess. And somebody, the door shook again. Oh, I wonder if that's the office behind me they're doing that. That I think makes more sense. Yeah, that's the office behind me. Okay, so no one's trying to get in my office. That's a good thing. I would not enjoy if someone tried to enter my office. Their insulation is not com common. There's, um, we have insulation here. Yeah, everything has insulation here. It gets cold here. Every winter, it's in the, you know, down to 15 usually here. Down to negative 50 Celsius, that's cold. I, I don't enjoy the cold that much. I, I like fall. So fall when it's nice and cool out, you know, like 50s or 60s. But, yeah, 
Like that? No, I can't see how anyone would enjoy that. That's just miserable. It's too cold. Negative 50 Celsius is too cold. Donor board time. Stolen? Why? Th who, who stole Bluetooth? Who even cares about Bluetooth? Okay, nobody stole Bluetooth off this board. This is for Wi-Fi, as I said before. Let's grab some more flux. That's soldered. Let's go ahead and solder our Bluetooth IC. I remember in one of my first boards, I didn't have donor boards, and the chip I got that was supposedly the same part number was way bigger and did not fit here, so I ran wires to Bluetooth. The chip was actually fine, it ended up being the CPU, but yeah, I ended up, the chip was too big, but did the same thing, so I ran wires to each pin to it. Never got it to work, though. I did lots of questionable things. So, again, starting and having no donor donor boards. Let's have a look at what what stupid stuff I did. Um, let's see. Do I still have this posted? I probably deleted this because it was just too embarrassing. Yes. Yeah, so here's what I did with this chip when I was starting one time. Yeah. So look at this uh, display capture. All right. Look at this. I did this because uh, the chip would not fit on the pads. It was too wide. So I did this and it didn't work, which is understandable because look at how this thing looks, you know. And then the airport card, which was also burned, I didn't have donor boards. So what I did, I um, one sec. Let's find this picture. 
So the airport card on this one board was also burned and I didn't have I didn't have donor boards like I said, so what I did I didn't couldn't replace that connector. So what I did is I would I ran wires to every pin on the airport connector. Um Let's see, I gotta find this picture. It's on, I think it's on Facebook. I deleted it off Instagram because that's just too embarrassing to have that up there. So I ran individual wires to each pin on the airport card and Wi-Fi worked and never came back like that. Yeah, look at this nonsense. This is, I've tried stupid nonsense like this. Um, let's see. Display capture. Yeah, look at this. I did this. And it worked. I cannot believe this thing worked. But yeah, it worked. Individual wires to the airport card since I didn't have a connector for this board. This thing worked. I could not believe this worked. Don't do that, please. D please do not do that. Do not do what I did. I tried to fire up a laptop with a dead battery and power brick not plugged in. Funny thing happened, Rob, the other night at a board that stopped turning on, missing PP bus. You know, I was testing it, right? What the heck, why isn't my chair moving? Oh, that's why. My jacket is caught in the chair. So this board was missing PP bus. Well, whatever idiot that just finished replacing the backlight fuse that was blown on it didn't plug in the battery. That same idiot also didn't notice that the charger was not plugged into the wall. So that was the whole issue the other night. I hate these little diodes. These suck to solder. There we go. Sometimes they suck. This one did not suck. Make sure it's on all pins. And that is. This actually I think is airport proximity sensor. I think this is a thermal sensor right here. Okay, so what did I place over here? Looks like this resistor. This cap. Diode. Whoa. That rebooted. The machine that I was running a stress test on rebooted. That makes me very, very sad because I worked hard on this. Why the heck did it reboot? Start. I gotta start a new stress test on it. I spent so long on this board, and I finally figured out it was missing PM Sleep SOL. I fixed it, and it just rebooted in a stress test. That is cruel. 
That you're not going to reboot. No way. No, no, no. No, no, no. I, I'm going to pretend I didn't see that. Because you do not just reboot. Never happened. Nobody here heard me talk about that machine rebooting because it didn't reboot. Understood? Probably overheated or something. All right, Bailey, I'll see you later. Have a good night. Have a good day, I mean. Let me start this thing on stress test again. Prime 95 and Unigen Valley can be a bit much for them sometimes. Sometimes they'll reboot. It doesn't necessarily mean there's an issue. It just means this acted funny. Some some machines, like I, I noticed that it's always send away the, the 3209. Anything with an Ivy Bridge CPU, Ivy Bridge Ultra Low Voltage CPU from 2012-2011. I would always send those away as no fix because they would always freeze and stress test and stuff but I realize is every single one of those will freeze if I run Unigen Valley they will always freeze the CPU temp gets way too hot and that's what they do they crash okay I didn't pull the computer restart because of a problem so I think we're okay let's try Valley system resolution full screen ultra anti aliasing two times run Sound on. Let's try and see if this crashes again. If they could run for 30 minutes on Valley without crashing, I generally consider that stable enough to send back to the customer. Because you're never really going to use it full on stress. And sometimes they just, they do it sometimes. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean the CPU is dead. They just sometimes will freeze. Not that huge of a deal. Like this machine passes Apple service diagnostic. And that's another thing, like Apple Service Diagnostic will sometimes miss stuff. So this passes Apple Service Diagnostic, but free froze in my stress tests. In a situation like this, what I'll do is, since it froze once, I'll repeat the test, see if it freezes again. Could have been a fluke thing. And if there's no issues, and if they could run this and for about 30 minutes, then it's deemed stable enough. Okay, so I think I'm done with the SMC area. No, one cap. And that one cap is stolen off of all of both these boards. So I'm curious to see people in chat that do this. Wh how do you guys stress test? What is your criteria for when something passes or doesn't pass? Mark, but plus Prime 95 on a gaming machine makes for a nice space heater. Yes, it does. That's done. Some general touch ups right here. Why is the Thunderbolt circuit stolen off of every board I have? Why does that always have to happen? We'll find one.
I remember when I was starting, I would just turn it on, turn it off again, see if it works. Yep, works. Send it out. Don't do that. I would like never stress test. But honestly, even even Apple Service Diagnostic does not find a lot of issues. You will pass Apple Service Diagnostic on a machine that can have can have a dead CPU sometimes. So there was liquid near the SMC. I'm going to give the SMC some flux just to get any junk that's under it away. Yeah, that's how if you send like a machine that's randomly freezing or something in warranty and it comes back no issue found. Yeah, it's because you ran Apple Service Diagnostic on it and it passed a dead CPU. Happens actually a lot. Those tests are often just not sufficient. It's best to be running with a combination of things. Again, we need this cap. Yep. Okay, have it your way. If you start backlight on this board, it'll be good. Get in there. There we go. Need some more. Okay, so. It appears that I keep taking the wrong components off the donor boards. Yes, and according to the donor board, 
You don't even belong here. A cat belongs there. This is what tiredness does to a board level technician. I don't trust that other one next to it either because I don't know if I put the right one on. Down there. There we go. Not quite. Okay, so we need that one big cap, we need a Thunderbolt Mux, we need this big cap for Thunderbolt, which is right here. Did this cap just break? This cap just broke off the donor board, so that wasn't even good. running over my chair with my jacket. I mean, I keep running over the jacket with the chair. So let's move that aside. Okay, so big cap near backlight. Steal that off this board first. Big Thunderbolt cap. And little Thunderbolt cap. Which has got to be on one of these. It just flew off. So time to grab another donor board. Stolen. Was this... Okay, I'm going to take it. No, this is mine. I first thought I'd put a customer's board up there because it had the CPU on it and everything on it still. I was thinking like, for a second, was that something that was not supposed to go there?
Can you recommend a fine point micro soldering iron for the? Huh? Oh, um, the Hacko FM. 2032 I think it is. I use a 2027 which is fine for this, but if you're going to do iPhones, get the uh, 2032. There, that's good. This cap is knocked off. Okay, I don't like th this cap. Like two times in a row, doesn't want to go flat. So I want to replace this one again. There's like something on it, or it's broken on one piece of it, or something, and I don't trust it. Okay, so this area looks good. We need to run a wire to PP5VS5 for th to this chip for Wi-Fi power. So let's do that now. PP5VS5 can be found. On this big cap near Thunderbolt. So we're going to run a wire from right here actually that's a little bit too close we're gonna run it here around we'll solder it on that cap too and then over to this pin on this chip then we're gonna run another wire from looks like right over here so right here around to the airport card and there's a one cap I missed right here we gotta solder this on You live in Palmdale your whole life? Yes, I li actually live in Lancaster. But my store's in Palmdale. Kinda wanna get out of here. Lancaster's kinda going to trash. Palmdale, like East Palmdale, like Anywhere from like 14 Freeway to like 20 or 30th Street East is pretty lousy. The area I'm in, a spot isn't too bad. You keep going east in Palmdale and it gets better, like 47th Street East and stuff. So I'm not too far from there. I'm like at the borderline bad part of town and good part of town. I don't mind it here. I would like just a better environment though, you know. Trees. We'll see where life brings me.
Yes, I agree. About the taxes and the laws in the state. I often feel my business is much better off somewhere else. That's our wire to PP5VS5. Our next wire is going to be from wherever this one nasty via went. So, from pin, looks like, yeah, so pin 7 of this chip over to pin 1, 2, 3, 4 of the airport card. Like, if I can get a nice store in, like, Oregon or something, like, in a good place in or Oregon for my business, I think I would take that over here. Needs a new airport card. Looks like trash. Connector looks fine. SMC reset circuit looks lousy. Let's go ahead and just take all this stuff off, too. Um... Like I like a I th I feel like if I got a store in like one of the tech areas of Oregon, which was actually not that high priced, my business would excel there. At least I think it would. I could be wrong. I don't know what competition is there, but I don't fear competition. You know, I could just go there and. And kill it just like I kill it here, you know what I mean? Did that darn thing freeze again? No, it did not. Alright, so yeah, this is good. It was a fluke freezing incident. Since Valley is done with its test, we'll go ahead and run Prime 95, small FFT. Valley is going to test both the RAM and the uh, GPU part of the CPU. So it's a pretty accurate... Unigen Valley alone is usually really accurate as far as letting stuff through. If, you if this is able to run for like 20 minutes and not crash, this thing is fine. But to confirm, we'll also run Prime95 to test the FPU on the CPU. Options, torture test, small FFT. Um, run. We'll see if that. I was in Salem, Oregon for a day. Place was a forest, super nice. Yeah, I really I like the trees. One day. One day, leading you know, fixing boards this late at night is gonna lead to something. Whether it's early death or where I want to go, you know what I mean. So we'll see what happens. Beaverton, yes, that's the city I think I was looking at a while ago. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, it was Beaverton. Not too far outside of Portland. That's kind of where I want my store. I think I would do really, really well there. I think if I do another... So I don't think I'm going to have it this year. So coming this year. But maybe the year after this. So I could renew my lease here. I'm fine here. But... So I don't think I'm going to be able to do it this year by August of this year. But I think by next year, the year after this, so 2021, I think I'll be ready to do that. August of 2021. Move somewhere where it's a really good spot for my business. So a 10-minute drive into Portland. Yeah, that's that's the spot that I was looking at. Intel is still there.
Tomorrow is going to suck, but I'm going to have everything done tonight so I could just chill tomorrow. I don't have to worry about shipping anything anymore. I don't have to deal with people tomorrow. If I fix everything, then I could come in and do whatever I want tomorrow. Even take a nap. I, I usually don't like taking a nap at work, though. The only thing tomorrow that's going to suck is waking up. Waking up is going to be horrible. Because we're down to about six hours of sleep here. No, five, four hours probably tomorrow. So this is done. Okay, so... Where did I have to run a wire again? So from here, this goes across these two resistors. So I can just take it off that pathway right over. So that's what we're going to do. Um, here's our wire. Yep. I think my second choice would be Maybe Idaho from Oregon. Was waking up ever fun for now? Uh, yeah, you know what, Rob, you're 100% right. It's never fun. Some days are worse than others, though, and tomorrow is not going to be a fun day waking up. But look at how this store looks. I, I did a good job today. I put another workbench up for shipping. The counter still looks like trash. My area still looks like trash a little bit. But yeah, look at this. So. Okay, so updated store tour. You can't see. The USB cord won't reach. But I put a workbench up over there. The assistance station is over there. I need to get soldering stuff over there. I need to order another quick. Hacko, all that stuff over there too. But that's the shipping bench over there, the one I just put up, because right now the customer service counter was acting as the shipping bench, and that's not good long term. Okay, so that is going to go to pin 1, 2, 3, 4. I don't care about crosstalk. I don't think that's going to affect it. So pin 1, one 2, 3, 4.
And then lastly, right here. So to people that know more about electronics than this, when you cross a trace like this, I know it can cause crosstalk, but does that really matter? Because I don't really think it does. I don't think it's going to matter that much. I don't really think that there's that much risk for crosstalk right there. We'll know if Wi-Fi doesn't work right. Once at a 90 degree angle, it won't cross talk much at all, so it's fine like that, right? Yeah. Rob's an electronics engineer. He's a really good guy. Oh no. I messed this up. Did I? No, I didn't. some reason this trace does not want to scrape away very easily there we go I also sliced my finger open today when building the workbench. That was interesting. I ran out of all my first aid stuff here, so what I did is I put hand sanitizer in the wound to sterilize it, and then wrapped it in a paper towel and captain tape, and then went to the pharmacy and got proper stuff for cleaning first aid stuff. Yeah, after this, there's going to be UV goop anyway, so... Yeah, I had to use paper towel and captain tape to hold it together. What's interesting is something like that, it didn't even hurt one bit. But then you get a little paper cut and that hurts. Like, yeah, a finger half sliced, half open. No pain, but little tiny cut, pain. The word workbench in the corner looks nice. I agree. Let's see, can I show you... Let me go to my other camera. Let's see if it'll let me, because that's on the security camera. They're one of the other cameras is for other ones. Let's see if it'll let me do it. it will not. Properties. Yes. Okay. So, store tour, since this goes higher. Workbench, shipping station, assistance station. Need to add soldering stuff. my rear station and the other room looks amazing too I can't show you that uh, maybe I can you probably can't see no you're not gonna be able to see that even if I open that door maybe but the other room is also super organized and it's never been organized since I've had this store like their shelves all the cleaning supplies is organized cause I never did it yeah, you can't see it in there. You can only see a little bit in there, but it looks it looks amazing. Uh, I am tired, but we have stuff to fix. I cannot go home. The biggest lies you're going to tell yourself are going to start with tomorrow. I'll fix this board tomorrow. Well, guess what? The board's going to sit all day tomorrow. So if, you thi if you're thinking about telling yourself tomorrow, cut that out and do it now. Don't lie to yourself. And yes, everybody should go subscribe to Rob Brown. 
he's going to have a really nice channel soon. And this one is going to go to what pins? So pin two. I do not like how this is. Not unless I could run it longer. Oh shoot, off frame, sorry. Off frame. So the wire was in a really awkward kink and I don't like that because I don't want it to break long term. So what I'm going to do is try and get it in there like this. There we go. We'll UV coat this after and it'll be good as new. Okay, so this is done. So that is really strange. I've been taking this new medication to help with my stomach. And the active ingredient is peppermint in it. And like my breath smells like peppermint right now. Like really strong peppermint. That's that's interesting. So I think we're good here. All the corrosion is taken care of. We just, left. we just have to UC it. And go from there. So let's UC this right now. Ultrasonic is nice and hot. This board could definitely benefit from a bath. It'll be good as new, refurbished. We've passed four tests on Prime 95 and that other one I was working on, so that one's good to go. area up. I'll switch the other camera so you have more to watch than just the mat. Not that any anyone watches, wants to see me do stuff, but better than watching just the mat. Airport card. This is corroded. Eh, he sends a lot of stuff. We'll just give him a new one. Yeah, don't be stingy with parts. With good customers, you know, $2 airport card, come on. Just replace it. Do 
Our next one's going to be a nice easy U8900. Yeah, everyone here should subscribe to Rob Brown. I can't talk. I know you're getting tired when you can't talk. Hopefully I don't get pulled over. That would not be good. Stop to the DUI checkpoint and they ask you to say your ABCs backwards from like... Say your ABCs backwards from like Z H to Y. I have no idea. Like, yeah, I can't do that on a normal day. Can't wait for my tools to come in, Tim and Lewis, an inspiration. I'm glad you're getting tools. Uh, okay, U8900, this will be nice and easy, hopefully. Tim's pretty sharp too, I didn't have the, the work discipline he has when I was his age, I was off doing other stuff. Yes, and that's something I've never had really interest in doing other stuff. I've just wanted to work. I don't know if that's normal, maybe there's something wrong with my brain, I don't know, but this is uh, what I've done. Battery, let's grab a new parts holder, screw holder I should say. You know you're getting tired and you start to feel really just off, it's a hard dis to describe feeling, but it's just a very like strange off feeling. I'm starting to get that way, I really want to go home, but I gotta fix these two, at least these two. If I can get through these two, I could justify going home. But if I can't get th through these two. Hey, but I had lots of fun. Yes, that's another thing. It's like, the way I'm doing this now, it's like, if I can build a business, get financially stable, then there's time for that stuff later. You know what I mean? But then again, lifespan is not really anything that's granted, you know what I mean? People say, oh, you're still young, you have your whole life ahead of you. Well, you don't know that. You really don't know that in life. You don't... Tomorrow isn't promised for anybody. So that's another thing. It's not... Nothing is for... Don't take anything for granted. Start second-guessing everything you do. Yes, I do that too. Should not get Branson in a cut. We'll wipe that with an alcohol wipe. That stings. Like in an open wound, it won't. So I don't know. If this is I like when you first get a cut, you pour alcohol in it. It doesn't hurt. But then when you get a cut like this, it's been there for a few hours. And the, so see on this cut right here, it's a little paper cut. If this is fresh, it won't sting, but you can't tell on the camera, but there's redness around it from infl inflammation. It won't sting when you first get it, but after it sits for a while and you put that on there, it does sting, which is really strange. I wonder if that, I don't know exactly the mechanism on that, but I wonder if it has something to do with inflammatory cells being there and, um, and stinging. I don't know. Okay. I was working in an electronics store, fixing TVs and radios, and married when 17. tired. No, can't tell yourself you're tired. If you say you're tired, then you're going to get more tired. So I'm not tired. Just leave it at that. Think positive. 
So this is an 820-3332 with the complaint of randomly going off, going black. Let's see if we can't fix this one. Have a cup of coffee works for me, yes. I don't have coffee here right now. And if I have coffee right now, I'm not going to sleep tonight. Well, maybe I probably would sleep tonight, but it's probably not going to be good for my sleep tonight. Two worst things to do when you're tired is think about all the stuff you have to do ahead of you. Just handle it. Just do it. Don't think about it. Just think it. You don't want to think about all the stuff you have ahead of you because then you get overwhelmed. You want to go home. So just do it all. Your repair shop is looking better all the time. Thank you, Sonia. I appreciate it. It's looking better lately, mostly due to my assistant. Looks much better now than when it was just me here. She's really doing an excellent job at keeping the place really nice and organized, as well as doing a great job with shipping and all of that. Fan connector off. No coffee in the workplace it isn't breaking an OSHA rule or something. Probably. Who knows? I have a poster that says all that stuff on it, but I don't read that stuff. Who has time to read the California labor law poster? Not me. I don't have time for that. So I'm going to go handle that ultrasonic board, put it in there, and the water to get the Branson off. Morning, Justin. How's it going? Okay, so intermittent video on an 820-3332. Hmm, wonder what the issue could be. It's surely not just U8900, is it? So, wow, this is the worst one I've seen. I've never seen a U8900 this bad. This one is bad. Like, look at that. I gotta tilt that up. Look at those joints. Those joints are bad. Really, 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 really bad. I'm gonna take a picture with my phone, actually. Where? You know what? Phone? Where's my phone? Here it is. Yeah, this is by far the worst one I've ever seen on the for a uh, U8900 issue. Yeah, look at those joints. Those are severely degraded. And cracked. No flash. Mm, 
It's not focusing right. There we go. This phone isn't as good as my other one for taking pictures through the scope, but the camera is overall much better. The camera on this phone is amazing. But to the position on the phone, I think it's because it's offset or something, it's just not as comfortable. There, that's a good one. So let's go ahead and make this board new again. Yeah, this this one was definitely worn down. More so than they usually are, at least. They're usually nowhere near this bad. So in a situation like this, I'm not going to use that much flux because I kind of want to clean it successfully after, so I'm only going to use enough. That there should be plenty, even a little bit maybe too much. We're going to turn our iron down to 640. And we're going to start. Add some leaded in there. And most of that lead free junk is going to go up on our iron. It's going to be replaced with the leaded stuff that's less brittle and will last longer than lead free. That should be good. Let's clean it up now. And real quick, I'm going to set this aside. Let's dry off our board and have a look. Okay, so even after ultrasonic. Let's give this, so this was four minutes, and wow. Whatever was on this got left on. This wasn't the flux, this was the other junk. See all that? I don't know what that is. But either way, I gotta run it two minutes now again through the ultrasonic because this isn't. You don't want to leave this on here, especially right here. You know what? It might be like stained into the board. But either way, I don't. I'm not satisfied with this. I feel like this needs to be longer in there. Let me 
not satisfied with this result. And this might need a little touching up. 3v4, two circuits going to be fine, but that coil looks like it needs some help. This has some oxidation on that. That's fine. But still, we'll touch it up. It's getting time to change my ultrasonic water. That's why it's cleaning like that. It's not. Alright, so this is like coming off. Wow, look at that. I had no idea I could take my iron and like destroy this. Alright, it's getting late. I should. Yeah, this is what happens. Let's change this. Sometimes boards will take a second run in the ultrasonic like this. It happens. Let's try a different cleaner on this. Um, just for the heck of it. I want to try cleaning that board in that area with something else that's not meant to go on boards to see if it'll remove it then we'll ultrasonic it because it looks sloppy I don't I like when I'm done with my boards I like them to look brand new I don't want to leave anything on them that looks you know it just I don't know if it's like an OCD not an OCD thing it's a pride in work thing where I just really like to have my work looking clean and I don't want that nonsense there if you have Halloween candy it'll give you some energy I don't have any unfortunately so yeah this wasn't actually yeah look at all that what the heck crest you didn't what what is this the crest didn't clean What the heck is this? Time to change the water in that darn thing, I think. Maybe so, Rob. I may do that. I didn't like the look of this wire at all. The water isn't 100% full either. I know you're not supposed to do that, but who cares at this point? I want to try some other type of cleaner. I'm going to get like some like orange cleaner, citrus cleaner or something. And put a little on there and see if it cleans up that junk. That was like not dissolvable. It may or may not be able to. So let's try citrus cleaner don't leave this on a board please do not clean a board with this and leave it 
I just want to see if it'll take off this junk. And it does. This is a very acidic and it's going to ruin a board if you leave it on there, so don't. Even then, it's not really doing much. Let's see, is it? Yeah, it is. So look, before... So that is removing it somewhat. Finish my last board going to bed now. Have a good night. Almost done with my last boards. That was not good. The wire's still okay though. Yeah, the orange cleaner works really good to take this off. Just don't, like I said, don't do this, please, on a board that you're not going to ultrasonic after. It's acidic. It's going to eat away at the components after. It's not going to hurt anything right now, though. Not as long as we clean it when we're done. Yeah, it does look like it's kicked on good, Rob. I agree. This stuff seems to work, though. Stuff seems to have done the trick. It's getting rid of what I wanted to. Or at least it's loosening it. It'll help with the ultrasonic. These wires need UV coating. Heated degreaser may be better since... Yeah, maybe so. But I have this here right now. And this is a rare circumstance that I need to do anything like this. And everything else looks good. So I'm going to dip this in the ultrasonic now. I'm going to follow Rob's advice. Let's leave it in here for a little bit. I'm going to turn my time down though. We'll give it two minutes aside now. Let's let it sit in here. Let's bump up the temp. bump the temp up to 80 okay U8900 starting to see double
Almost done here. Almost done. I could go home. Go to sleep. Wake up. Fix more boards. Okay, so let's double check at this. See any bridges? No, looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Don't like this pin. Let's clean it. And that is clean enough for me. Let's go ahead and reassemble. Let's do thermal paste on it. Always do thermal paste. Always got to do thermal paste anytime something is in like for something like this gets new thermal paste. Because if it's been, if it's old enough for U8900 to be cracked like that, speaking of thermal paste, there's metal thermal paste on my bench. If it's old enough for U8900 to be cracked, then thermal paste is going to be all dried and worn out too. Unless they already tried replacing that. Sometimes customers will replace thermal paste on them, but it's pretty rare. Most of them do not have aftermarket thermal paste that I see. Factory thermal paste, hard as a rock. Alright, we're at 74. You know, doctors are on call for like 72 hours at a time. I don't know how they can do that. It's like I'm fixing MacBooks and screwing up. I can't imagine what they do to people. Clean heat sink, CPU, and GPU. Docs on call for 72 hours scares me. Yes, me too. I think the best thing you can do with doctors in general is just take everything with it. I mean, if you trust your doctor and you, you know your doctor, then that's one thing. But if you're seeing a new doctor or something, 
that you don't know or ER doctor, urgent care doctor, just take it with a grain of salt because a lot of times they're not really right, which is scary. Whoa, a lot of steam at 80 Celsius. water tomorrow because it's yeah like sometimes doctors they they're just incorrect sometimes which it happens but there's cases worse than others you know like I had a case with a skin infection on my hand that I knew I had a skin infection and they argue no no it's not a skin infection yes it is and then end up getting worse and worse and worse and worse and then yeah ER doc took them six or seven trips to figure out I had pancreatitis. They didn't do, like, if you had a, abdominal pain, they didn't do a CT with contrast in, like, the first first visit. Or they try and pawn off, say, oh, it's a stomach flu or something. No blood work, anything like that. Like CT with contrast after the first trip or like the third trip? Because I hope they wouldn't have missed that. Okay, so it took MRI to sort out. If CT was negative for anything, then it, that would be harder to find, you know. If they can't figure out where your pain is coming from. Because usually CT is pretty decent on stuff like that. Like CT is probably, honestly in most cases, probably better than MRI for stuff like that. I don't know, though. I'm not a doctor. I got four CTs with contrast. Eh. That's like... Like 12 years of background radiation worth of CT scans. That's quite a bit. I've only had two CT scans, so... Rob probably glows at night now, after all that. I want to request my ultrasound for my neck because I want to see what the heck they saw that they the CT was such a big rush. Not a big rush, but it's such a, you know. Because usually ultrasound is better for the neck rather than CT. So I'm curious about what, what it was because it could be nothing too. It could be, you know, let's make more money. So I want to get those images and have a look. I don't need a Halloween costume now. Exactly, you just glow. I don't know what the radiation dose is. I don't know the exact scale or anything, but I know I got 922 grays for just the neck. I don't know if that's high or low. Hot, this, what, this thing is burning. Select temperature down, we're too hot. Radiation dose depends on the scanner type too, like the new, like the new 128s or 256 or 320 slice CTs are just incredibly fast. So they can often produce images, really really good images, in like one rotation of the gantry, which is basically like this. This just leave it at scanner. Um, when something like a four slice or a 16 slice is going to take like several rotations to even get a. Uh, image so you have to use a lot more radiation be like the new ones are just so quick okay much better now it left a little bit but it's better yeah I think they're up to like 300 or 640 slice now which is pretty crazy So yeah, it left the same gunk on, but it's better. It's much cleaner now.
Okay, so this is done. We're going to treat this now with the uh, UV conformal coating. So see, this is better. It's not perfect, but it is better. So see that? That's fine. That's That meets my standards. So now we're just going to put some green stuff on. Green stuff. Very important right here to have green stuff. Green stuff is going to help keep our wires stable. It's going to protect them from bridging anything underneath. If the coating on the wire wears off, it's going to make them more durable. It's a must have green stuff on your board. Okay, so we have our dose of green stuff here. We're going to UV light it. Actually, let's store our green stuff on this side. Then we'll UV light it. So green stuff here. Green stuff here. stuff here they have it in a syringe and you can put that but I like really thin layers on it so I don't want to use the syringe because then it takes longer to cure or sometimes it won't even cure at all Smaller, yeah, even a smaller gauge, it's, it's any size is going to be way too big. Let's leave it at that. Let's get some UV on this, and while this is, has UV on it, we'll continue with reassembling this other one. Let that sit, cure. Okay. Much tired. Here it is. I had an almost boot loop at that moment. It was like, what's going on? Okay. I don't remember if this one, the stress testing. see okay so it did a bunch of tests let's see this is torture test options test stop um, completed 12 tests in 57 minutes zero errors zero warnings you are good to go
Tomorrow's Friday already. This week went by way too fast, in my opinion. November 1st. I've been here since last month. I have not left this store since last month. It's true. I'm not lying. Forest Lynn, have a good night or morning, or day, whatever it is now. I don't know. Ah, my eyes are wigging out. Night's one of those nights I think I'm going to skip dinner. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see how I feel. How's what's new in electronics fixing? Uh, not much. Still broken stuff, still stuff to be fixed. Hmm, I made a mistake. This screw... Just sleep in the office. Nah. There's no heat in the office. There's no blankets in the office. There's no private bathroom in the office. I will drive home. It's kind of nice leaving at late because there's no traffic anywhere. I'm used to it. There's always that one slope. The, the one thing I hate about driving is when it's like nighttime like this and you get there's like this one road I take to get home and it's a 60 mile an hour road you'll get like two people driving like 40 miles an hour right next to each other it's like seriously if you're gonna go 15 miles an hour below the speed limit do it in the other lane because I want to go past you I hate when that happens
Hi, good morning. Good morning, good evening, good night. Good morning now, I guess. Battery in. Let's see if this thing turns on. Now that it's fixed. Fan spin. Battery. Fixed. Image. I need to tie my shoe because I have a feeling I'm going to fall if I get up and walk and put this in the slot. So I guess I'll put this one. Actually, I'm going to put this one on stress test right now because I'll be here for a little bit longer. Uh, no, get the heck out of here. No, get the heck out of here. You're not going to do this tonight. Get the heck out of my... It's 3 a.m. What are you doing up? Yes, and Al was not here, and we fixed two boards. Imagine that. You think stream at 3 a.m. makes you safe? Yes, because you're asleep at 3 a.m. It's okay, we're done with board repair for tonight, so we successfully deeded, defeated the lethal one. You're safe, CPU. No, Anel's not going to hurt you. Good CPU. So this one is good. This is ticket 4792. That's old. This has been here for a while. So one thing I do, or that I am doing now, is we put a QC Pass sticker on here. So this is like a branding thing, but also helps. And we don't have one this old for 47.92, or do I? Let me see. I think it started at 47.95. 47.95, so we can't do that. So in this case, I just put a QC pass sticker. Every board I work on now gets a QC pass sticker. So this helps verify. It does two things. So if someone tests it, they put the sticker on there. If they don't test it, the sticker doesn't go on there. So this sticker only goes on after it passes testing. So you know, if you get the sticker, the board has been tested, and it is ready to go. And then I get a Sharpie. Well, now they get a sticker, but in the past they would get a Sharpie. We will write TCRS 4792. That way it's marked, fixed, has a ticket number for further reference, and you get a cool shiny sticker. What's the small blue light pointing down the board? That is a UV curing lamp for the conformal coating. This needs screws, and I lost screws for this. Really fun. Real quick, let me start this on stress. I don't think I hit the option key in time. Yeah, this is just to cure the uh, conformal coating. That should be just about good though. I work Fridays and need to help Lewis. We have a huge wave of MacBooks. I'll read your 
chat in a second here. Okay. Might stream tomorrow if you want to tune in. I work Fridays and need help Lewis with a huge wave of MacBooks. Yes, I will watch. Okay, so bottom screws for this that I misplaced, so we will go to our collection of bottom case screws. Happens. Loose screws, not a big deal. Place them. It's gonna feel so good to go in bed tonight and just sleep. I so the the UV lamp I got I got this at AutoZone. It's much more powerful than that that little laser lamp, and I like it much better. It just like blasts the whole area of the board. It's for finding like AC leaks and coolant leaks. You put a coolant uh, dye in the coolant and stuff, and shine that light around. Best part of UV pen is pointing at people's eyes. Will you see something now? That's right. I'm gonna shine this in your eyes when I come to New York. Everyone is now blind. That was the darn point. What do you think the point was? To make everybody see better? If you're blind, then you can't see when I lose screws and stuff. Working for Lewis is hazardous. It would probably probably be hazardous here too, if I was a little bit lightened up and not stressed. It would probably be just as hazardous here. If I was, you know, not as stressed. And I hate this mic. It like, the, the, I don't hate it, but it, like the thing is too long. It always catches and pulls. So, Anel, what I was going to do is I was going to send Lewis an airsoft gun. Do you think that's a good idea? I think that's a good idea. I think Lewis would enjoy that. At the expense of uh, you guys. We should send Lewis an uh, airsoft gun. Or a pellet gun. UV coating is done. The board should be dry enough. Let's bake it now. Bake it for a good long time. This is a donor board. This one, all the screws are in. 
This. Whatever you send him, make sure it's an automatic rapid fire. Yes, those things hurt. The airsoft fully automatic. That. Yeah, that, that's a good idea to send to him. But I feel like someone in that shop is going to lose their eyes if he gets a hold of one of those. It's probably going to be a Nell. He'll get hit by a truck and then he gets his eyes shot out. To reassemble this. I could leave this for my assistant tomorrow to reassemble, but I want to get this ready to ship tomorrow. Okay, so I got a 4792. Let me set in that invoice. Make sure my display capture isn't on. Oh man. Forty seven ninety two. About one month. That's old. I yeah, that was a tough issue to solve. Okay. Um completed email. On inspection, found system hanging in S3 state. Checked for shorts on all SO rails. Inform perfect imaging. Which found Oh shoot, I left out. Uh, shoot. Copy. Delete. Okay. Email. Completed. Changed a resistor for 
T-pad power. P, 3v3, and let's go S4. T-pen. What the heck am I talking about? Is it 5v S4, 3v3 S4? Pin 10, 3v3 S4. R4380, R4830. Which blew from a defective trackpad. The trackpad was replaced. Start this machine on stress testing. Forgot to do that. It's got a little bit to go in there. Okay, save um, forty seven ninety two. Forty seven ninety. Two. We did board repair. Two thousand and thirty-two. One ninety-nine. Truck pad placement. Eighty-nine. Total is two eighty-eight. Request shipping address. Send. Everyone thumb down. Uh, don't thumb down my stream. Screw you. I'm not staying at your house in L. Go to sleep at 2 a.m. You usually sleep at like 10. Yes, I do usually sleep at like 10, but the fact thing is I need to get stuff done and if I'm not here getting stuff done it's not going to get done and then it's going to be a sad day tomorrow you know what I'm going to leave this board in This trackpad is probably junk. And now, if you thumb down this stream, I'm gonna, st ugh, I'm gonna get you. You watch this. You wait. You wait till I show up in person. One thumbs down. That's probably you. I'm just going to Q-tip an alcohol to the trackpad. If it works, it works, and it doesn't, it doesn't. It's not my problem. It's a repair store. I don't want to take out this battery. They can do it. 
I will give him a new cable for free, though. New cable for free. The speaker just blew in that MacBook right now. Running the stress test. That's funny. Listen to this thing. Oh well. I have an SMC I need to swap from a donor board. Do you have any clamp suggestions for rebuilding the chip? I just tape it to my mat. I don't even use um, any tape half the time. I just put this chip down and um, yeah, I just do that. I put I don't even use tape anymore. I just put the chip down on the mat and solder paste in the stencil. And I'm happy like that. It works. I don't know if that's like speaker fail or like digital distortion or something. Not sure. I know it's not normal. Where's the heatsink screws for this thing? Okay, here's some. I bet one of the speakers isn't connected all the way or something like that. I gotta fix that, it's bothering me. Oh wait, that's not the speaker at all. That's the fan bearing. Yeah, that's actually the fan bearing. Hear that? It sounds like what my engine is going to sound like in another, if I keep driving that thing for 15,000 more miles. That bearing is destroyed. <laughs> Sounds like a guy. It does sound like a Geiger counter. It does sound like a Geiger counter. Oh shoot! The fan has to go on. Okay, I caught that. Sounds even more like a Geiger counter now.
Okay, you know what, guys? I'm too tired. I need to go home. I'm, I'm too tired. This can wait till the morning. Yeah, it's 12.30. I gotta get out of here. At least this thing passed stressed. Alright, since we started this stream, I will finish it showing the first board we worked on works. Since that one's just done, but I can't. I'm done. I'm, I've hit the wall. Tim sucks, that's right. So let's test this one that we just fixed. Notice after baking, the green stuff looks very good. So we are going to do that right now. Green stuff. Fixed green stuff. I'll take a picture of that for the website. This will turn on and I'll I gotta clean off the imperfections though so it's good enough for the website. I don't think I will. I think I would. Okay. Let's take bets. Will this work? Will it not work? Uh, which one are you? You are this one. LVDS cables all corroded. Let's take care of that. I'm here so you know the answer. If this has a freaking dead CPU and L, I'm going to come over there and run you over again. Nell's curse is broken. It will work. I agree it'll work, Rob. This is a 100% certified TCRS refurbished board. Work vehicle has over 250, runs like a champ. Is it a Ford 4.6 liter? If it's a, a Spectrum van, it probably is. Mine has, it's also a 4.6 liter, it has 230,000 miles on it. But it also has a lot of metal shavings in the oil which I could only presume right now based on oil analysis I think it's coming from one of the thr the rear th crankshaft thrust washer because that's the only brass part of the engine the oil analysis showed brass in the oil and it has a rear main seal leak so I think it's one of the thrust washers which is yeah I'm not fixing that let's get rid of it okay so we have V-Core, waiting for backlight. Backlight, look, fixed. The board's going to fall out. Fixed. Wait for question mark. Question mark. No, it's not manual transmission, it's automatic. Question mark. It's an F-150, so I don't want a man manual F-150.
It's been reliable. It's just worn out. It has 230,000 miles on it. Even with running full synthetic, every 3,000 miles I change the oil. It's just, it's worn out. Every once in a while you get one of those engines that most of these in the most of those Ford 4.6 and 5.4 engines, those things last forever. I mean, four or five hundred thousand miles, but every once in a while, you'll get that one that just doesn't. Happens, not a big deal. Should I text an L now? Yes, it works. An L does not win. An L's curse has been broken. We've defeated the curse of an L. This thing passed stress. That's done. The air will work and pass stress. So, have a good night, everyone. Happy November. It's already the 11th month of the year, and this year went by so incredibly fast. Can you drop the oil pan without pulling the engine? Y you have to raise the engine up. I was going to put new rod bearings in it and all that and do all that, but you have to raise the engine up the cross members right in the way and I don't want to do that it's just not worth it it's you know the upper end is worn out too I was gonna do rod bearings lifters oil pump all that so I kinda just wanna get it something new but yeah th doing that with the engine in the vehicle would be too hard and if you take the engine out you might as well put a new engine in at 230,000 miles I'm sure Cylinder walls are going to be probably a little bit scored up. I'm sure it probably has some blow-by. It's just not worth it. Okay. Have a nice night, everyone.